While ProMotion NG offers the core animation features typically used for traditional pixel art character animation, there are many situations where external animation methods might allow you to arrive at a better result more quickly. The problem is, most of these external animation tools were not designed to produce clean pixel art as a final product. This video will show you a great workflow which can help you achieve smooth, high quality, and sophisticated pixel art animations by combining the tweening and modular animation features in the free version of Spriter with ProMotion NG's automated and manual color palette and pixel editing features to arrive at a pixel perfect end result. The first steps should take place in ProMotion NG where its large array of pixel perfect and indexed color control features should be used to create an accurate mock-up screen for your game, establishing and finalizing the exact visual style. This should include a single frame establishing the exact size, look, and color palette of your player character at the actual desired final resolution for your pixel art game. Be sure to work in separate layers for each element of the mock-up such as HUD, background layers, and the character in effect sprites. Now when you need to create an animation for the character that requires mostly the smooth rotation of limbs or the entire figure, it's time to prepare some images for use in Spriter. Increase the size of the entire image to four times the actual size, and quickly clean up the character by painting over jagged edges without adding any new or fine details. Then use the freehand brush grabbing tool to start grabbing specific body parts like the character's head. Paste each body part in an empty part of the character's layer. Do some quick cleanup to remove unwanted elements from other body parts, or to paint over what had been obscured by other aspects of the character. The goal here is to create separate body parts that can nicely be overlapped at rounded limb joints that can provide clean results when slightly repositioning or rotating parts to change the position of the character once it's reassembled in Spriter. Once all these large size body parts are isolated and cleaned, grab each one in turn using the rectangular brush grabbing tool, being sure not to grab them with a lot of empty space around the actual art, and save each image out into a folder you should create specifically to contain all of the body part images. Be sure to save the images out as 24-bit PNGs. Now that all of the body parts are exported, it's time to start up Spriter, start a new project, and point Spriter to the folder you just filled with the body part images. Now let's quickly switch off smooth sampling and switch on pixel art mode. This will ensure we see the exact pixels and colors of the images, and that while exporting, no blurring or new colors will be created. Drag out each image and place them to properly assemble the full character. Now hold ALT and left click and drag to create the bone for the pelvis, then hold ALT again and left click and drag to create a child bone of the pelvis for the torso, then continue for the neck and the head. Now left click the torso bone to select it, then hold ALT again and left click and drag to make the bones required for the arms and legs, making sure to left click on the torso bone before creating the first arm bones and left click on the pelvis bone before creating the bones for the thighs. Once the bones are all created, you can left click and drag them to make sure they are properly placed and angled. Once it's perfected, left click on each bone, then hold the B key and left click the image you'd like to be a child of that bone. Once you've done this for all bones and all images, the character is fully rigged and ready to animate. If you're new to Spriter, be sure to have watched the quick tip tutorials to become familiar with the core animation features and workflow. It's also handy to know that you can pull up Spriter's manual by choosing Help, Help in Spriter's menu. You can scrub to anywhere on the timeline and just start moving or rotating any bones to create a new keyframe. As needed, you can left click and drag to change the position of any keyframe or delete it with the delete key or icon. You can also drag up on the main timeline section to expose the timelines of specific bones and images, in case you need to delete or add a keyframe for a specific object within a main keyframe. You can add to or reduce the duration of an animation, and you can choose to stretch the existing keyframes to proportionally fit in the new animation length if you'd just like to slow down or speed up the entire animation. Once the animation is complete, set the background color to a color not used in the art, such as what is called Programmer Pink, with a red and blue value of 225 and a green value of 0. Now you can export it as single images or a sprite sheet to the desired number of frames per second and scale, such as 25% if you want to export the frames back down to the actual size the real game will need. 
We recommend you export as a sprite sheet as this will speed up the next step of processing the exported frames down to the original indexed color palette. Now back in ProMotion, make sure the original mockup is loaded and make sure that the same background color, in this case Programmer Pink, exists in the color palette. Now load the sprite sheet into ProMotion and choose to keep the current palette. This will automatically remap the 24-bit image back to the original palette you had carefully created. Now you can zoom in and begin using ProMotion's array of pixel art tools to examine and perfect each frame. Once you're done, you've got the final pixel art created at the proper scale and color palette. As you can see, the same animation can be exported to any number of frames you desire, and due to the nature of this process, smooth and sophisticated sub-pixel animated art is always the result. Now imagine if halfway through the production of your game, after creating many animations, you decided to redesign an aspect of your player character, like their head, torso, or boots. If you had created all of the animations purely freehand, you'd have no choice but to repaint that changed element in every last frame of animation. But if you used this workflow, which uses Spriter as a middle step for the creation of frames, you'd only have to change a handful of body part images to reflect the new design, then re-export, remap, and pixel polish the full animation as a sprite sheet. For these kinds of eventualities, it's best to not bother pixel perfecting most of the frames or animations until your game is nearing completion and it's certain no major design changes will be made, at which point you can finally undergo final polish of the art. This can help avoid a lot of wasted time perfecting art that will just end up on the cutting room floor. This kind of workflow not only can help you arrive at high quality animations faster, but can also help you stay much more open to trying major design changes so that the final result is the best it can possibly be. Thanks for watching.